Hey folks, welcome to Gamer Logic Live. Today's edition is the start of Snatcher on the Sega CD, which was released in 1994. Just a little back history on this game. This actually came out for a Japanese PC system. Uh, I believe it was the PC NEC 88 on floppy disk uh, all the way back out in 1988. So when this game was actually ported over to the CD-ROM based format, uh, we actually didn't get this game here until about 1994. So. By the time American fans were actually getting a chance to play this, it had already been six years since the original inception of Snatcher. Now, an interesting thing, uh, it sounds like due to time constraints from what I read, it sounded like the third act in the game was actually cut from a lot of versions of this game. It was never finished in the PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 version, as well as the Sega CD version, actually has a third act in the real ending that... Uh, the developers wanted to put in. And speaking of developers, this is actually a game by uh, Hideo Kojima, the man responsible for the Metal Gear games. He actually did another game similar to this called Police Knots. Now that is one I have played, I have finished. A English translation was actually put out for that a couple years ago. It was great and uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, Snatcher is one of those games that I picked up. I managed to pick it up for a great price at the Midwest Gaming Classic a couple years ago. And I've started it a few times. Uh, I've only gotten past the very beginning sequences and have never really finished. So this is going to be a pretty new experience. Uh, hopefully it's a new experience for you guys as well. So this is, uh, this is going to be pretty fun. So here we go. We are going to start up Snatcher now. Yeah, the PC-88 is a system I'm not super familiar with, unfortunately. Um, I believe uh, Luke Morris actually has posted some videos on it in the past, but I really don't know too much about the system. The fact that it's on floppy disk kind of scares me. Just in terms of, you know, are the discs going to be good when you get them? I've had that issue a lot with the Famicom Disk System games. Alright, so here we go. Let's load up Snatcher. Uh, another interesting thing about the Sega CD version of this game, if you notice it says uh, device, joypad only, you can actually hook up a Sega justifier to this, or I should say a Konami justifier, or justifier and uh, the shooting sequences, you can actually play it with the light gun. Now, I have uh, kind of a split TV set up, set up. I am working off a CRT TV. What you're seeing me look at the camera here is actually a CRT TV that I'm looking at. Uh, behind me, I have a uh, LED TV, which I use for monitoring stuff like that. Occasionally, I use for retro games and stuff. Not too much, uh, just because the signal generally doesn't look as good. Now, uh, I do not have the gun for the Sega Genesis, otherwise I'd probably use it. So, in this case, we are just going to use the regular controls. And I may have to adjust the volume here, because this is a loud game. Ah, uh, no, I think we're okay. Yeah, I agree with you, especially with the fact that uh, this was released on the PlayStation 1 uh, a couple years after the Sega CD version was released. Now, Kojima didn't have anything to do with that, so maybe that had something to do with it, I'm not too sure. A mysterious explosion destroys the I do own it on Saturn. I actually hear it censored, though, pretty heavily. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere, creating a deadly biohazard. Carried by the trade winds, Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Half of the world's people die. The greatest biohazard in history later becomes known simply as the catastrophe. But at this time, who could have possibly imagined that the ultimate biohazard wouldn't occur for another half century? 50 years later, Mankind faces its greatest crisis, the appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon, 
or perhaps an invasion from some other world. They appear during winter killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. I heard for uh, this release, for the Sega CD release and for the American release, they actually had to change some of the details on the Snatcher robot itself there to not look so much like the Terminator. Even though, looking at it now, it, it still looks pretty damn close to the Terminator. Now, listening to this game in the headphones uh, for a Sega CD game, they really did a fantastic job with this. The music's got that really awesome 80s feel to it. And it's just really well done. I, I wish back in the day... Um, I would have seen this or I would have played this. Uh, I was a Nintendo kid. Had I seen this, I would have been very impressed. I only had uh, one person, one of my fr my friends had a Sega CD, and I think uh, the only two games he had was Eternal Champions, uh, Return of the Dark Side, if I remember. That's the subtitle for that. And Sewer Shark, which was an interesting game in its own right, but uh, not the killer app. This music kicks so much ass. This is awesome. I have a hell of a time with the Internal Champions games. Those games kick my ass. Yeah, that would be uh, a very, uh, very good way to categorize the game, SAS. Uh, Blade Runner kind of meets Terminator. Police Nuts has another extra excellent soundtrack as well, but I'm, I'm going to say just basing it off this first track here that uh, maybe Snatcher has a better soundtrack. This is pretty 80s, a good 80s collection of ass kicking, and that's all I can say about that. Yep. He's got quite a role in this. This is kind of his origin. How was work? Everything okay? Hmm. Gillian, what is it? What's wrong? Jamie, I've become a junker. A junker? Gillian, but why? Jamie, you know why. It's the only way we can regain our lost memories. Snatcher is the only word that keeps coming back every time we try to remember our past. I have to face them to find out why. Yes, but I can sense that there is something terrible hidden in our past. And if we remember it, it will destroy us. Jamie! <laughs> I'm going That's what I was thinking. I've turned into a junker. I'm gonna go score some crack. What? I can't hear you! That was some really good animation right there. See ya, bitch! Gillian Seed, estimated age 31. Three years ago, he and his wife, Jamie Seed, are taken into protective custody in the Siberian neutral zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. 
He's Both a badass. Jamie and Jamie suffer from severe amnesia. Their memories of events prior to being picked up in Siberia lost in a mysterious mental fog. Two years ago, after a vain attempt to rebuild their marriage, Jamie and Gillian separate. Following extensive special military training, Gillian is ordered to report to Neo Kobe City as a Junker, effective today. Yeah, the more and more I listen and play this, had I, I seen this back in the day, this would have blew my damn mind. Man, it's so great to be playing on the original hardware again and streaming on the original hardware. I like the name of this chapter already. Check out that operator. Check out that operator. Uh, front pod. I'm Gillian Seed. I've been assigned to Junker Headquarters effective today. Oh, you're Mr. Seed. Please forgive me. My name is Mika Slayton. I'm the administrative assistant and operator here at Junker Headquarters. Very pleased to meet you. Look like Mrs. C with that cleavage you got going on there. Let's just take a look. Alright, now let's get creepy. Operations for today. Just told me that. Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's ask about junkers. So essentially, what a junker is is uh, a Blade Runner. If if you're still going by the Blade Runner stance of things. want to know if you're a damn robot lady. I think I've asked if I want to go. Mr. C? Gillian's fine. You can call me Gillian, Mika. Okay, Gillian. I'll open the main door and show you around headquarters. Gotta laugh at that sound effect there, because it literally sounds like someone tapping the microphone. What shall I show you first? Hmm. I guess we'll head to the Chiefs. Chief Cunningham, Gillian Seed is here. I brought him in as you requested. Thanks for coming, Seed. I'm Benson Cunningham, the Chief of Junker Operations. Gillian Seed, I've been transferred here from the 17th Special Forces Division. 
I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. By the way, I understand you're suffering from amnesia. Any sign yet that your memory's coming back? I'm afraid not. I still can't remember a thing from before the army picked me up three years ago. You're married, aren't you? Yes, but we're separated now. She has amnesia as well, and without any memories between the two of us, I'm afraid there was very little to base a good relationship on. I can see your point there. Smooth move there, Seed. They are. The purpose of the Junker Force is to eliminate Bioroid Snatchers. The Junker, even in the course of carrying out, one must not harm innocent civilians. So that means I'm not going to be blowing away some innocent civilians, unfortunately. At least if I do, I'll probably get in a lot of trouble. The subject may not be physically investigated or restrained unless its irrefutable ev evidence exists that indicates the subject is indeed a snatcher. Junker is required to assist and support civilian bounty hunters. In order to carry out one, a Junker is allowed to use a blaster and a navigator and a turbo cycle. Those are the five rules. There'd be a lot more junkers. That should be enough to make your duties as a junker quite clear. This is your junker ID card. It will identify you as a junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And, uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. See. Having to carry around cash is so inconvenient. Okay, so let's not lose that card. That would be bad. Let's ask about our navigators. <laughs> you know, back in 1994, I'm sure we all, la you know, everyone laughed when they saw that line, like, carrying cash is so inconvenient, but it was better than a check. I think a check was more convenient. Now we laugh at it because it's true. I mean, cash is kind of inconvenient because we all carry debit cards for the most part. All right. Well, let's go ahead and exit. I guess we'll go see the uh, the chief. And we still have those old swipe machines for credit cards back then. I believe so. I mean, my parents never used credit cards back in the 90s, so 
I really don't remember too much other than watching people, but yeah, I think it was those old swipe machines. I don't think the digital credit card transactions really took place until maybe like 97, 98, if I remember correctly. Because let's see, God, when did I start working? 98 and 99, and if we still had a regular telephone line, we were doing credit card transactions at for uh, at the video store. All right. Well, there's nothing going on here, so let's go. I'm gonna go to the detective's room. Gene Jack Gibson. He's our ace runner. Of course, he's our only runner, so he's an ace by default. shot. This is a pretty intuitive game. I mean, I thought about a lot of stuff here. This must have been really awesome in 1988. Obviously, it didn't look as good. So, let's uh, we'll bring up Mika's file here and see if this thing works. There you go. That's cool. You can actually check out the city data, the bridge. I love when games are just packed with information, even if you you never end up having to actually use it. It's kind of like if you look at uh, Kojima's uh, later games. Like with Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, there's all that extra content that you don't have to watch it to beat the game, but you just get more of a full uh, effect with it. 
exit. I guess we'll go to the shooting range here. Press the A button, you can draw your blaster, C to fire. I gotta say, this is the a little weird to play uh, with the... light gun. Just because the view is so small. For sure, yeah. Let's go see our engineer, and if I remember, this is where we will meet uh, Metal Gear. Oh, good, Harry's back. Great to meet you. You're uh, Gillian Seed, right? Haven't we met somewhere before? No, I don't believe so. Really? Well, I guess I must be imagining things. I know, I know. All right, allow me to introduce the Navigator, which I designed especially for you. <laughs> hey, Metal Gear, get out here. I love the fact that they use the music, too. Now, here's a trivia question Metal, for you guys. Introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Thank you for Pleased to second. meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mop 2. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. I think he's turning red. I took his basic design and his name from the Metal Gear Menace of the late 20th century. But there you go. Uh, quite unlike that Metal Gear, this one was designed for peaceful purposes. All right, quick trivia question for you guys in the chat. As you saw when he introduced Metal Gear there, there was the big shadow coming in. What other Kojima Konami game taunted a possible uh, enemy appearance with a shadow that ended up being something very small in the end? Oh, that's right. Uh, don't panic yourself. I got it right over here. This is your blaster, the official weapon of a junker. It's got full user feedback circuitry, adjusting itself to your reaction time. In other words, it's just as good as you are. What do you think? Here, see how she feels. Another badass shot. It's unbelievably light. <laughs> you bet it is. This ain't one of those ray guns the army uses. She's put together with the latest carbon polymers and ceramics, not affected by heat one bit. And her ergonomic design optimizes both functionality <laughs> That's very and true. power. Well, what do you think, Gillian? I'll take it. So the, the game I was referring to where they used a big shadow to kind of uh, scare the player into thinking 
something big was coming along was actually Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, when you're in the ship, you're coming up to a corridor, and you actually see this giant shadow overcast, and it looks like... Oh man, now I'm forgetting his name. Uh, Vulcan Raven. One of the big bosses from the first Metal Gear Solid, and when you actually look, it's just this little action figure that uh, you can actually wind up. It'll wind up and shoot and stuff like that. So, kind of interesting how Kojima used that again. So a specimen, they're always stolen or have self-destructed, so you gotta wonder if they've actually get the specimen at Junker HQ and they're stolen, which to me would suggest that there's someone in the inside working for the Snatchers. They've got slits on their hand for some reason, a well-placed shot that will often destroy their control functions. That's why it's important to practice your marksmanship. Got anything else to ask? Investigate? Little gear? Carry me while you run, please. Yes, it's equipped with a nuclear missile. It's a walking tank. Do you have a save function? Just use Metal Gear. I was gonna ask. I forgot how to how to save on this. Yeah, he is cool looking. Video phone. Even a video phone seemed kind of funny, I guess, in 1995, but these days I guess it's kind of normal. I mean, it's through PCs and stuff, but that's not too far off. I have a video phone call from Jean-Jacques Gibson coming in. Connecting. Junker HQ, this is Gibson. I've cornered a probable male snatcher. I'm in the abandoned factory in the M District. Request immediate backup. Gillian, that means you. You better head out right away. Jean needs your help. We must hurry. We'll use a turbo cycle to travel to the scene. Be careful, Gillian. This is a turbo cycle, specially designed for junker use. In addition to three-wheeled ground travel, it is capable of hovering and high-speed flight. The vehicle is also VTOL capable, so takeoffs and landings in narrow areas present no difficulty. A flying tricycle, huh? I just came in on one of these things. We have been assigned this vehicle for use in our investigations. Well, let's use Metal Gear and save here. Continue game. It's a 47 interceptor. Kind of funny considering Agent 47, the brand new Hitman game, was going to be out on Tuesday. Alright. Let's enter the turbo cycle. Now, just an interesting uh, trivia here uh, thing on the side. Um, those people who uh, burn ISOs of the Snatcher Sega CD, CD ROM, uh, there is a copy out there that. It's very rampant. There's a lot of copies of it, of the ISO anyway, that uh, when you enter this turbo cycle, it'll play a, a good chunk of the audio, but it never will actually load the proper sequence with it. Uh, the first time I played Snatcher was actually with a, uh, a CD-ROM copy I made off an ISO, 
and uh, I was really sad at the fact that I couldn't get it working no matter what I did after I ended Turbo Cycle. So I was really happy when I managed to get a copy of this for a good price at the Midwest Gaming Classic. It was literally just a CD-ROM, but uh, you take what you can get. Especially now, the game is quite up there. Now departing for the abandoned factory. My first day on the job, and now this. Ace Junker Gibson is cornered a suspected snatcher. I wonder if this guy really is a snatcher. Guess I'll find out now if all that training really It's a good deal. I, I paid 50 for mine. I was kind of off in the corner of nowhere. Now it goes for like 200, 300 bucks. What would you like to do? I'd like to exit the turbo cycle. Please. Must be the storm. Snow nine. Huh. <laughs> there, right behind the building, is the uh, the gravestone from Super Castlevania Four. Looks like a storm may be coming. All right, let's investigate building. Oh no! What was that? A male scream. Perhaps something has happened to Jean Jacques. Gillian, please use extreme caution. I read multiple moving objects within the factory. This could indicate the presence of snatchers or insectors. Insectors? What in the world's that? A spider-like robot used by snatchers as security devices. Though compact in size, they are armed with needle guns. Use extreme caution. Alright, let's do this. Metal Gear just to save. I'm paranoid. Save, please. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to continue.
What the? It's Little John. Little John? Yes, Jean-Jacques Gibson's personal navigator. Damn, he got toasted. this memory chip out of there in one piece? I will attempt it. Now retrieving memory chip. Memory chip retrieved. Wish we could have met on better terms.
just in case. We gotta be thorough with this. Analysis complete. Results on the display. One. Chromosomal analysis of cells from the papilla and root reveal 46XY. Subject is male. Two. Hair color. Brown. Hair structure reading of 65 indicates European subject wavy hair. Three. Attachment of root structure and thickness of the base of the strand suggest hair was pulled out of follicle. Four. Enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type A, Rh factor negative. Five. Cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. The results of the analysis strongly suggest that the strand of hair was pulled from the scalp of Jean's attacker during their struggle. This strand of hair almost certainly came from a male European blood type A negative snatcher. recovered tissue sample. Analysis complete. Results on the display. 1. Enzyme antibody analysis indicates subject is blood type O, Rh factor negative. 2. Chromosomal analysis of cells in the sample reveal 46XX. Subject is female. 3. Cell component distribution indicates presence of artificial protein compounds. 4. Number of melanocytes in sample indicates that subject is Caucasian. The results of the analysis strongly suggest that the tissue sample, a cluster of skin cells, was scraped from the subject during a struggle with Jean. These skin cells almost certainly came from a female European blood type O negative snatcher. Make sure there's nothing else on. Jean had an ulcer, huh? Yes. In addition, I read a substantial quantity of partially digested organic compounds. Organic compounds? If you can determine the composition and the degree to which the food's been digested, we may be able to figure out where Jean's been. Now making incision in Jean's stomach to analyze organic compounds present. Yeah. indicate the organic compounds are primarily composed proteins that have been exposed to digestive acids for approximately three hours. Amino acid structure of the protein suggests the meat is that of a buffalo. Buffalo meat? Yes, buffalo meat. The results indicate that Jean ate buffalo meat somewhere about three hours before he was killed. <laughs> Good choice.
Yeah, where is the snatcher? I guess I just gotta be more thorough. I should get the hell out of here. Blaster.
Oh shit. I wonder how this played on the PC-88. I said. I go with you. What's wrong with you? Hurry it up! I am incapable of locomotion. What on earth are you blabbering about? Let's go! It's gonna blow! Please save yourself! I am paralyzed with fear! <laughs> oh, I can't believe this stupid robot! Come on! you left the volume turned up. Damn snatchers. <laughs> there is no need for concern. I have stored all the information about the evidence and the area in my memory. Yeah, we no should kidding. return to Junker headquarters. We've returned to Junker headquarters. Ooh, that was some first day. Now entering the building. We've entered the lobby. Gillian, I heard about Jean. I'm sorry. I wish I could have done more. You performed your duties quite satisfactorily. That's right. It's not your fault, Gillian. Don't worry about it. By the way, the Chief is waiting for you. This is the Chief's office. Well, see, that was a pretty rough first assignment to draw. You made a great effort, though. I've studied the data transmitted back by Metal Gear, so I know all about what happened out there. It's too bad about Gibson. He was a great junker. Seed, I need you to take over for him. You're the only one I've got left who can battle this Snatcher menace. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, 
marker besides the coat. should be for the key. All right, go. Capsules. Land a disc. Five-inch floppy disk. What kind of medicine is this? I'll perform an analysis. Acid inhibitors, membrane-protecting agents, H2 blockers. This is medication for an ulcer. Jeez, it looks like John's stomach was really in terrible shape. Then what was he doing eating buffalo? <laughs> it seems a little unusual. Perhaps there was some reason that he had to eat buffalo. Let's go to the computer room. Yes, it is. We should go to the engineering room. Well, so our new junker has returned. <laughs> I register high alcohol levels. Harry is intoxicated. I really... You know, I really thought you were better than that. <laughs> Harry, what kind of backup was that supposed to be? If you were a better junker than that, Jean... Jean wouldn't have had to die out there. Harry, that statement is incorrect. Don't worry about it, Metal. Oh Harry's yeah, right. big time. Jean... <laughs> Sorry, it's... it's not your fault. <laughs> Metal, would you give Harry the memory chip we pulled out of Little John? Of course. Harry, this is Little John's memory chip. Alright guys, well, we are a little bit past an hour here, and I'm going to keep these live broadcasts at an hour at least for now, so we are going to go ahead and save, and we will continue this next week. So big thanks to the couple of you who have been chatting and checking out everything, I appreciate it.
and we'll be hitting this again next week and we'll continue to hit it till either we finish it or uh, if uh, we get a guest we may do a different game just to spice things up a little bit but uh, thanks again everyone for watching and I'll see you next week with Snatcher peace guys <laughs>